Hello everyone, I am Abraham Escamilla and this is my digital observation video. The school I observed for 45 hours was Hoover High School. The school's colors are green and white. The colors are adorned all around the campus with pride. The classroom is a nice size and fits five desks grouped together into a combined six pods. The teacher has a large desk in the middle with, which holds most of the technology on the desk on the side where she organizes the school work. This is where I sat. She has filing baskets for students from each period to turn in their class or homework. There is also a basket on her smaller desk where she has activities that have been planned out for the week. The class has a picture of Martin Luther King and has posters which relate to English literature and also has Bloom's taxonomy Tex pyramid included. There is a wall which has all the model student essays included as well. The neighborhood surrounding the school seems pretty calm with a middle class feel all around. There are two main streets with Barstow and First surrounding the school. The classes I observed were 11th and 12th graders. What I first noticed was that these are two very different classes that have nothing in common which presented challenges to the instructor. The 11th grade class was an advanced placement English class and the 12th grade class was a pathway English class where students have a designated place to go after they graduate high school. The teacher was a great instructor and did her best when teaching the 11th grade AP English class. The students were always engaged and although they could get a bit disruptive, they always stayed focused on their priority of passing the AP class to get college credits. With the senior class, the teacher had a tougher time and her demeanor would change when she gave instructions. Some of the students in the Pathway English class have issues going on at home and even though they are a bit older than the 11th graders, they can be immature and not take their education seriously. Some seem to have given up. Some students have voiced to the teacher that they weren't going to go to college and that all the stuff they're doing in class isn't going to help them in their future. A quote that she used was, What you learn in my classroom might seem unimportant now, but they will resurface when you need them later in your lives. The students which cause disruptions are the usual overbearing ones that have caused the seating charts to change at least three times since I was there. The teacher uses a passive form of dealing with these students' behavior. Student A was moved from pot C to pot A and is surrounded around students who aren't entertained by him. She hands him notes as to not embarrass him in front of his peers that tells him he needs to calm down. The teacher works with students individually to gain their respect and let them realize she actually cares. I think the teacher means well in all her classes, but towards the end of the day, she looked exhausted. Her enthusiasm was different in a senior 6th period class compared to the 5th period AP English class. This could be because the students are less engaged in the last period compared to the 5th period. The AP English 5th period class has all students who are very close to being at the same level of reading. Accommodation and inclusion is not a problem here. This makes this class flow better because the students expect each other to behave well. This is not the case for the 6th period class, which has students at various levels of reading and writing. They are forced by the students' pathway system to stay with the same class since they began high school. I think a multicultural education was lacking in the senior 6th period class. Students are sorted by their expected ability. If teachers find a student can handle an AP English class, they recommend it. This helps schools get higher state test scores. If students are wanting to pursue college or don't meet higher education expectations through test assessments, they are put in either regular classes or a pathway class. There are also online courses for the purposes of helping students catch up with credits. This helps increase graduation rates as well. The main people who are benefiting from the system is the school's administration since they are the ones held accountable for the school's progress. Teachers and students are probably the ones not benefiting from this system because they are being forced to lower their standards so there will be fewer students going into the online courses. Students might be graduating but their learning is below standard. Unless they are in AP classes, they may not be getting the most out of their education. School achievement or academic performance is the extent to which a student, teacher, or institution has achieved their short or long-term educational goals. The school has two tutors in the library to help students with their homework or any project. The teacher in my class has students also come in after school to help their grades get better. Multicultural education addresses the needs of culturally diverse populations of students. The school's culture is comprised of a majority Hispanic population or outside gang influences since the school's location is in the inner city. The population culture Popular culture involved with the hype hip-hop has allowed students to respect each other as far as black and Hispanic students go. There is a bit of a culture class, however, when it comes to white and his Hispanics and political ideologies. The teachers I met are older and aren't up to date with current aspects of teenage culture. This hurts their ability to reach their interests. 
I found that administrators and teachers are divided because administrators expect teachers to perform certain tasks they aren't familiar with themselves. Students are expected to uphold certain behaviors, but the teachers can't hold firm in this because dropout rates would increase. I do not expect this division between administrators and teachers. The book never addressed this issue of relationships with administrators or that there are many meetings teachers have to take part in to create a better education environment where students thrive. Having to fulfill certain hours of school activities by attending sporting events and chaperone students as well as adults who take things far was a surprise to me. I wonder how now how involved in the community will a teacher have to be to gain respect of students and parents alike. Will I have as a teacher balanced to my time to fulfill my duties? I learned that teaching a diverse group of students consists of a different approach and every class is going to have different personalities. A multiple intelligence survey, as I stated earlier, can help me assess what type of ways these students learn. I won't need to be passive in my discipline, but will still need to stay firm so that class doesn't get out of hand. I will need to accommodate students who show these behavior problems and see if the student's problem is a personal problem or if it's persistent with other teachers. And that's how I will assess my class.